Hello mga you're watching On Real TV's Prime at 9, now headlines. Inquiry committee headed by Justice Retired Indu Malhotra constituted by the Supreme Court to look into the alleged lapses in Prime Minister's Narendra Modi's security during his visit to Punjab on January 5. National Conference rejected the second draft proposal of the Elimination Commission, which has suggested the creation of new constituencies and redrawing of others in Jammu and Kashmir. Putting an end to the speculations, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi declared Charanjit Singh Chani as the party's chief ministerial pick for the upcoming Punjab Assembly election during his visit to Ludhiana on Sunday. CM candidate Charanjit Singh Chani thanked Rahul Gandhi saying a poor man became Punjab's chief minister because of it. The Election Commission of India on Sunday announced further relaxations with regards to election-related programs for political parties in the poll-bound states of Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Uttarakhand, Manipur and Goa. The relaxations, however, will be subject to create certain conditions, the poll panel said in a notification. Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid his last respect to the legendary singer Lata Mangeshkar in Mumbai on Sunday. Last rites with full stage honours of Lata Mangeshkar, who passed away earlier today due to multiple organ failure, is being performed at Shivaji Park in Mumbai. Earlier, the central government announced the two-day national mourning to be observed in the memory of Lata Mangeshkar. During the state mourning, the national flag is flown at half-mast throughout India and there will be no official entertainment. It has also been decided that the state funeral will be accorded to the departed soul. The legendary singer passed away on Sunday morning at an age of 92. Inquiry committee headed by Justice Retired Indu Malhotra constituted by the Supreme Court to look into the alleged lapses in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's security during his visit to Punjab on January 5 reached the state on Sunday. Sources said that Justice Malhotra landed at 9.30 a.m. in Amritsar from Delhi and would proceed to Ferozpur by road. She spent the day in Ferozpur and reached Chandigarh in the evening to talk to the officers. The Apex Court has set up a five-member committee on January 13 to inquire into security lapses during PM's visit to find out causes, fix accountability on airing officers and suggest remedial steps to prevent future slip-ups. The Apex Court had also stayed the inquiry committee set up by Punjab and the Union government. Prime Minister's convoy was stopped allegedly by the farmers protesting on the road. The PM was stranded on the road for 20 minutes before returning to Madinta Airport where he had asked Finance Minister Manpreet Badal to thank his Chief Minister that he had returned alive. Putting an end to speculations, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi declared Charanjit Singh Chani as the party's chief ministerial pick for the upcoming Punjab Assembly elections during the, his visit to Ludhiana on Sunday. The decision was taken days after the Congress High Command had sought people's opinion to decide its chief ministerial candidate in Punjab through IVR interactive voice response calls. Announcing the Congress's CM face, Rahul Gandhi said, as per the people's suggestion, the party wanted to have a chief minister from a poor background who understands the pain of the lower classes. After after he was announced the CM candidate, Charanjit Singh Chani thanked Rahul Gandhi, saying a poor man became Punjab's chief minister because of him. Punjab Congress Chief Navjot Singh Sidhu, who is, was also in contention to be the party's CM face, hailed Rahul Gandhi, saying that only he would have made a Dalit as the chief minister of Punjab. Congress party ke jo 
نیتا ہیں وہ ہیرے ہیں اور بہت گہری بات کی ہے انہوں نے دو ہزار چار سے اب میں راجنیتی میں ہوں تھوڑا سا ایکسپیرینس تھوڑی سی سمجھ راجنیتی کے بارے میں مجھ میں ہے بھائی اور بہنوں راجنیتک نیتا دس پندرہ دن میں پیدا نہیں ہوتا ہے راجنیتک جو نیتا ہوتا ہے جو سچا نیتا The National Conference rejected a second draft proposal of the Delimination Commission which has suggested the creation of new constituencies and redrawing of others in Jammu and Kashmir. NC summarily rejects draft working paper made available by Delimination Commission to associate members on 4th February 2022. Party spokesperson Imran Nabi said the fresh proposal included redrawing of constituencies in the Union Territory as well as increasing the number of constituencies six in Jammu and one in Kashmir. Dar said a detailed response of the party will be given after discussing the implications of what has been proposed in the report by the Commission. Stands uh, challenged in the Supreme Court. So the Parent Act is under judicial scrutiny. So constitutional property would have said that you should have baited for uh, you know implementing such laws which derive their strength from a law which is constitutionally suspect so that that reason apart and uh, uh, what they had done with our recommendations on the first draft so we were forced to you know come out so strongly against it because whatever we had said has been completely rejected by the commission so uh, uh, what we are seeing the initially the the, the, the draft that has been presented to our MPs is that they have redrawn uh, the constituencies. New constituencies have been added. They have uh, put in uh, new boundaries have been created. So that you will also come to know in coming days. But this, as of now, the, report, uh, the, the draft that stands as of now, we as uh, the associate members of the Delimitation Commission reject this report. The Election Commission of India on Sunday announced further relaxations with regards to election-related programs for political parties in the poll-bound states of Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Uttarakhand, Manipur and Goa. The relaxations, however, will be subject to certain conditions, the poll panel said in a notification. Restrictions regarding outdoor-indoor meetings for rallies will be further relaxed subject to condition that the number of persons attending the indoor-outdoor Meetings will be limited to a maximum of 50% of the capacity of indoor halls or 30% of the open ground capacity or as fixed by district election officer as per requirement of the social distancing norms and whichever is less. The notification read. Legendary singer Lata Mangeshkar passed away in Mumbai at the age of 92 on Sunday after suffering a multi-organ failure last night. Earlier in the day, a senior doctor treating her at the Bridge Candy Hospital said was in intensive care unit of Mumbai's Bridge Candy Hospital, said Dr. Pratit Samdani, who is treating her at the hospital. The Bhardwad Nawadi was admitted to the hospital after being diagnosed with pneumonia and tested positive for the novel coronavirus earlier in January. She was on the ventilator for weeks but then on January 28, she was taken off the ventilator as she showed signs of improvement. On Saturday, her health conditions deteriorated again and she was put back on the ventilator. Meanwhile, government announced two-day national mourning on the passing of Lata Mangeshkar flag to fly at half mass and state funeral for Lata Mangeshkar. <laughs> Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other nation leaders controlled the death of the singer. He tweeted, I am anguished beyond words. The kind and caring Lata Didi has left us. She leaves a void in our nation that cannot be filled. The coming generations will remember her as a stalwart of Indian culture, whose melodious voice had an unparalleled ability to mesmerize people.
During a virtual Dan Jopal in Pol Baun Uttar Pradesh on February 6, Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid tribute to legendary singer and Bharat Ratna Lata Mangeshkar after her demise and said that her melodious voice will always remain with us. Lata Didi has gone to the heavenly abode. Many people like me will proudly say that they had a close connection with her. Her melodious voice will always stay with us. I pay tributes to her with a heavy heart, said Prime Minister Modi. परमात्मा में विलीन हो गई कल ही वसंत पंचमी का पर्व था मां शारदा की हम आराधना कर रहे थे जिनके कंठ से मां सरस्वती का आशीर्वाद छोटे बड़े हर किसी को मिलता था बोलता दी ब्रह्म लोक की यात्रा पर चली गई उनके व्यक्तित्व का विस्तार सिर्फ गानों की संख्या पर सीमित नहीं था मेरे जैसे अनेकों लोग हैं जो गर्व से कहेंगे कि लता दीदी के साथ उनका निकट संबंध there has been a growing trend where police forces are using social media as an effective outlet to spread social awareness. With catchy captions and hashtags, they have been gaining positive reactions from the public. But their main objective is to create awareness, and they have been successful. And now, continuing the trend, the Mumbai police through social media have introduced the Nirbhaya Squad. The Nirbhaya Squad was established by the Mumbai police after the rape and murder of a woman in Shakinaka area of the city in September last year. The teams formed to curb crimes against women, carry out special patrolling in vulnerable spots and awareness drives, and track the activities of sexual offenders, among other tasks. The team consists of women officers. The Mumbai police for this initiative roped in Bollywood director Rohit Shetty and the promo also has legendary Bollywood actor Amitabh Bachchan giving the voiceover. The video highlights the function of nearby a squad, a dedicated squad consisting of women officials. The informative short shows women who feel unsafe dialing the helpline number 103 in times of crisis. Mumbai police released the short with the caption Lang ke ab tu Lakshman Rekha ban nidar ban nirbaya. Let's have a look at the clip. Ar kathin paristhiti ka samna kar वो अपनी प्रबलता दिखाती है इसीलिए तो नारी शक्ति कहलाती है अब वक्त है ऊंची उड़ान भरने का भय को पराजित करने का विजय बनने का के डर की दीवारें चल बनाए जग नया लांग के अब वो लक्ष्मण रेखा बन निडर बन निर्भय हमारी मां बेटी और बहनों के हेल्पलाइन 103 पर डायल करते ही निर्भय स्क्वाड उनकी सुरक्षा के लिए हमेशा रहेगी तैयार Sadarakshanai, Kala Nigrahana.
Komor Kana Takachi in a send another Dal secular leader HD Kumar Raswami on Saturday slammed the PJP led government in the state over the hijab ban, saying that it will create more problems for girls in getting education. And by bringing this topic, the PJP is planning to gain its vote back. He further slammed Chief Minister Paswaraj Bomai and said that he does not have control over his ministers as they are making vague statements. The former Chief Minister also urged the government to allow girls to continue to wear hijab. The Karnataka Education Department on Saturday issued a directive that all the government schools should follow the uniform dress code announced by the state government. The department said if there is no dress code for colleges, under the Department of Pre-University, one can wear the dress which will not affect equality, integrity and law and order. On February 4, students wearing hijabs were allegedly denied entry into a government college in Kuntapur area of Utupi in Karnataka. I made a row on wearing the headscarf in classrooms. In a similar incident in the state, students at the Chika Malakuru College wore saffron shawls to ma mark the protest against girls wearing hijabs on campus. On Tuesday, many students also staged a dharna over the same. Union Minister for Minority Affairs Mukta Abbas Nakvi today offered a chadar at the shrine of Kawaja Monuddin Jishti on the occasion of the 810th annual years and read out the Prime Minister's message of tolerance and harmony. और मोदी जी के सूफियों की सोच सोच संतों का संस्कार और समाज का समावेशी विकास का संकल्प हमारे इस देश को विश्व गुरु बनाने के रास्ते पर ले जा रहा है प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी हमेशा देश के सद्भाव देश के लोगों की तरक्की और मुल्क की मजबूती और मुल्क के लोगों की महफूजी महफूज रखने के लिए हमेशा काम करते रहे The returning officer in Muradabad reached houses of specially abled people above 80 years to collect vote. Three teams have been assigned in district to carry out the task. Speaking to NI, Muradabad District Magistrate Shailendra Kumar said, Three teams have been set up in district which are going to people's homes and taking votes. EC has come up with provision to help voters above 80 years, especially able to exercise their franchise through postal ballot. जो भारत निर्वाचन आयोग ने इस बार एक अतिरिक्त ऑप्शन दिया था कि जिन लोगों की जिन मतदाताओं की उम्र 80 वर्ष से अधिक हो या जो दिव्यांग जन हैं उनको अपने घर पर भी पोस्टल बैलेट की सुविधा दी गई है इसके लिए उनको फॉर्म 12 डी होता है वो भरना पड़ता है तो सभी जो भी हमारे दिव्यांग जो 14000 मतदाता थे और लगभग 28080 साल से ऊपर के मतदाता थे उन सब के यहां फॉर्म 12 डी भेजा गया था उसमें से जिन लोगों ने उस पे सहमति दी पोस्टर बैलेट के लिए उनकी आज और कल दो दिनों टीम जाएगी आज टीमें सबके यहां जाएंगे और जो किसी कारण से आज नहीं मिल पाते हैं तो कल जाएंगी हर विधानसभा में इस कार्य के लिए तीन टीम लगाई गई है और एक टीम में एक मजिस्ट्रेट एक पीठासीन अधिकारी एक पोलिंग अफसर एक कैमरामैन और एक माइक्रो ऑब्जर्वर और दो पुलिसकर्मी सात लोगों की टीम बनाई गई है हर टीम में गए हैं और इसकी सूचना सभी पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज को भी दी गई जिससे वो भी अपने प्रतिनिधि को वहां भेज सकते हैं और आज एक काम हो रहा है आज जिन लोगों का छूट जाएगा किसी कारण पर उनका कल हिरो नो मिनिस्टर अमित शाह टुडे एड्रेस पब्लिक रैली एट जद डोमिनेटेड एरिया वेस्टर्न यूपी बागपट व्हाइल एड्रेसिंग द रैली शाह स्लैम्ड एसपी चिवाकिलेश यादव एंड फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मनमोहन सिंह एंड एक्यूज्ड देम ऑफ डूइंग नथिंग फॉर द स्टेट एंड द पीपल सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक और एयर स्ट्राइक कर कर आतंकवादियों का खात्मा बुलाने का काम देश के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी और मोदी जी ने मोदी जी ने पूरे देश के अंदर एक संदेश भेजा किस प्रकार का संदेश कि भारत के जवान और भारत की सीमाओं के सामने आग उठाकर नहीं देख सकते वरना उनको दंड देने का नरेंद्र मोदी 
Karnataka Chief Minister Baswaraj Bomai will meet MPs from the state in Delhi on Monday to discuss various projects and programs ahead of the presentation of the state budget next month. Addressing the media, Bomai said he will also meet the legal counsels who are representing the state. In interstate water disputes and few important decisions would be taken on the future course of action. The Chief Minister also informed that he has sought an appointment with the Union Finance Minister Nimala Sitaraman and intends to discuss state budget financial condition, GST and other issues. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister GL Perius arrived in Delhi today for a three-day visit to India. Perius is on a three-day visit to strengthen bilateral ties, including in areas of trade and connectivity. He will meet External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar. A pre-poll alliance called Manipur Progressive Secular Alliance was formed in the state on Saturday by six non-PJP parties, the Congress, CPI, CPIM, Forward Bloc, RSP and JDS for the February-March Assembly poll. The MPSA launched 18-point common agenda of the alliance. The alliance was announced at the press conference held jointly by the six political parties at the Congress Bhavan. AICC election observer in charge of Manipur, J. Ram Ramesh, former State Chief Minister Ukram Ibopi Singh and left parties representatives Moirang Them Nara Singh attended the meeting. The MPSA leader said that they have agreed to implement an 18-point agenda if they voted to power in Manipur. The agenda includes saving the territorial integrity of Manipur and historical boundaries of the state to enact a right to free health care, laws to benefit the people of Manipur, to provide unemployment allowance to the youths of the state, to preserve communal harmony in the state and to deliver economic justice by ensuring livelihood income to every family in Manipur, the leader said. The common agenda of the alliance also includes full implementation of Article 371, Clause C of Indian Constitution. Polling for the 60-member Manipur Assembly will be held in two phases, February 27 and March 3. Votes will be counted on March 10. As a part of Bharatiya Janata Party's program to inform the people about the benefits of the Union Budget 2022 to 2023, Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur in February 5 said that the construction of modern India will be on the basis of Atma Nirbhar Bharat. There has been an increase of 35% in capital expenditure. There would be a construction of modern India on the basis of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, Thakur said. कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर की बात करो तो उसमें भी 35 प्रतिशत की वृद्धि हुई है जो आज तक का सबसे बड़ा साढ़े सात लाख करोड़ रुपया इसके अंतर्गत खर्च होगा पिछले साल साढ़े पांच लाख करोड़ खर्च हुआ था इस बार साढ़े सात लाख करोड़ रुपया खर्च होगा इससे पीएम गतिशक्ति योजनाओं को भी बल मिलेगा देश भर में आधारभूत ढांचा और सुदृढ़ होगा और मैं तो ये कहूंगा आत्मनिर्भर भारत की नींव पर आधुनिक भारत का निर्माण in order to assist the fight against the coronavirus pandemic, Japan has announced to donate 20 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to the seven emerging countries. Additional 11 million doses to 13 countries will be given through COVAX facility. The countries that said to receive the vaccines were thrilled to hear the news. Apart from this, $124 million have been given to 59 countries to improve their cold chain vaccine transport. VTV correspondent Mr. Long Nguyen reported the development. The national television station of Cambodia broadcasted a live program lasting over an hour making, marking the arrival of the vaccines. Thailand, one among the beneficiaries, has received 2 million doses. 
The AstraZeneca vaccine was recently administered at hospitals and clinics. Japan's contribution in its neighbor's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic has been warmly received. The international community has also lauded Japan's humanitarian efforts. That's all we have for now. Keep watching on Real TV.